In this video, we look at suitable test data. So let's look at a range of suitable test data for this simple program. So this program is going to print three options to the screen, one new game, two save game and three play game. It's then going to set a choice variable to zero and it's going to say while the choice is less than zero or greater to three, the user is going to constantly be prompted to enter their choice. Here we have a test table with a range of different types of data that could be entered and they're falling into types of categories and you need to know these for the exam. So you should always check the special case of no data being entered at all. This isn't strictly either invalid or abnormal data, but it certainly isn't what you'd want the user to do. Tests three, four and five show abnormal data. This is data that should be rejected by the program. So we've got J, the hash symbol and minus six. Test number two shows normal data. So this is data that should be accepted without causing errors. So for example, choosing menu choice two, save game. Tests six and seven show both examples of extreme and boundary data. So let's focus on extreme first. This is data that is the largest and smallest acceptable values. So in this case, one and three will be classified as extreme data as they're at the extreme ends of the numbers which we wish to accept. Boundary data, on the other hand, is the largest and smallest acceptable values, as well as the corresponding largest and smallest rejected values. So one and three are the largest and smallest acceptable values. That's why they're both boundary and extreme data. But boundary data is also zero and four as they're the other side of the valid boundaries one and three. So one thing you have to be able to do is to identify suitable test data. So look at this scenario here. What data could be used from this sign for a car park ticket machine piece of software? Well, we'd certainly want to test stuff around the bottom box on the left there. We're being told that if you park up to an hour, it's one pound up to two hours, it's two pound 10, up to five hours is three pound. So we've got different amounts here and different times. We want to test all those various numbers and limits and boundaries. We've also got some additional information. There's an evening rate that's just two pound 50 if they're over after 6 p.m. but before midnight. On Sunday, again, it's two pound 50, but this time all day. There's some additional charges for lost or damaged tickets. And we also see here the car park has some valid opening times. Out of all this information, we can see a number of scenarios we may want to construct tests for. Supplying, normal, abnormal, boundary and extreme data. We might want to test half hours and full hours of parking. One and a half hours, parking on a Sunday in the evening. What happens if you attempt to park before or after closing times? That's everything you need to know for the exam. Pause the video now and take some notes.